Good morning and welcome to Thailand! So I am finally home after three long years. I am on full vacation mode, except I'm kind of working right now, but just for you. I thought this was a good opportunity for me to show you what I eat in a day while visiting home in Thailand. So this isn't gonna be any sort of touristy food or wow, that's so amazing kind of food. This is very basic, home cooking, very representative of what we eat on a typical day. I hope you enjoy! Today we're having a classic Thai breakfast khao tom or plain rice porridge. And to go with it, I'm making a really homey salad, yam pla krapong, which literally means canned fish salad. Canned fish referring to the sardines in tomato sauce. This is a pantry staple in Asia, just like canned tuna in the West. I'm making a really simple dressing with lime juice, fish sauce, sugar, and Thai chilies, which is a standard basic Thai salad dressing. Some fresh herbs are a must in Thai salads, so I'm adding cilantro, green onions, shallots, and some fresh ginger. I was gonna add lemongrass, but I forgot. I guess the coffee had not kicked in. The dressing simply gets tossed in with our fish, and that's it. It's a basic, simple salad, the flavors are tart, salty, and spicy, which is exactly what you want to serve with the very plain tasting rice porridge. By the way, how cute is this bowl? Another great pairing with khao tom is some salted duck eggs, which we buy already cooked. All we need to do is cut it in half right through the shell because the shell is so brittle, it's very hard to peel, and we'll just use a spoon to scoop it out. We also have a couple of leftovers joining us for breakfast, a tuna omelet that my mom made, and a dried shrimp salad, which is made with the same dressing as our sardine salad. And that's it, that's breakfast. And I know many of you are thinking, wow, this looks very elaborate for a everyday basic breakfast. But remember that two of these are leftovers, which is exactly the kind of thing that we like to eat kapong with. It's a great canvas for bits and bobs of leftovers in the fridge. The egg I didn't have to do anything with, and we only made one thing and it's like a canned fish dish. So it's really not all that much. So after this, I'm gonna go do some shopping for dinner and then I'm gonna have lunch at hopefully a local restaurant nearby. So we're stopping here at literally a street side restaurant in my neighborhood and the hilarious thing about this place is we always joke in my family that they can't possibly be good because the label, the tagline says they serve southern food, Thai food, Chinese food, Japanese food, sushi, steak, and basically everything under the sun. So for all intents and purposes, this place should not be good, but it's actually been around for a while and it's really popular amongst the locals. So I mean, they can't be that bad. So we're gonna try it out. This place has the word holy basil in the name. So of course I gotta try their holy basil stir fry or pat kaprao. I tried a type that I've never had before, which is ground pork with century eggs and a fried egg on top, of course, so it's a double egg meal here. I loved this, really good flavor, and the century eggs adds a nice creamy texture to the whole thing. My brother Art, the one filming by the way, got a stinky bean stir fry with shrimp. There are only two shrimp, I know, but hey, this thing costs like $2. And it was also super tasty. My friend got a pat kaprao also, but hers is made with fried chicken knuckles. And this is exactly what I love about Thailand. There are so many variations of the same dish that I would never find in Canada. Some prik nam pla is of course on the table. That's our condiment made mainly from fish sauce and chilies, and you can put it on anything. Portion sizes are kind of small here, but you know what? I was perfectly satisfied, not overly full like I often am in Canada. We headed to our neighborhood supermarket called Max Value, and I only needed one thing, a whole barramundi. This is a common popular fish that's available everywhere. And when in a Thai supermarket, you've got to get some snacks. Seriously, Thai snacks are so interesting. Flavors of chips you've never seen, and there's just so much variety. And because lunch wasn't that big, we have room for snacks. So we are home, and then the plan for dinner today is that I'm gonna make just a couple things. I'm gonna make a green curry, and I'm gonna make a steamed fish that we just bought from the store, and then my dad is gonna supplement the meal with a few dishes that he is buying from outside, which is something we do a lot, where we buy some things and make something, and it just makes, you know, the meal 
easier to do. And so now I'm gonna go pick some basil for our curry. So this doesn't look like much, but there's so much edible plant in this less than extravagant looking garden. So Thai basil is right here. It's not the hottest looking plant, but it is so, so aromatic. All right, time to get dinner started. I'm making plakapong ning manao or steamed fish with lime. Living in Canada, I really miss the ease with which I can buy a whole fish that's cleaned and gutted, ready to be steamed or fried. And I also really miss an outdoor kitchen so things don't steam up or stink up the house. Steamed fish is such a great weeknight dinner because while the fish is steaming, you can be making a quick sauce for it. So here I'm making a simple garlic and lime sauce with chilies, pork stock, fish sauce, lots of lime juice, cilantro, and green onions. And yes, there is a recipe on my website as well as a few other sauce recipes for steamed fish. And then once the fish is done, you just pour your sauce over it and it's ready. It looks impressive, but actually so easy and quick. I'm also making a green curry with chicken and winter melon, which is my favorite combination. I'm using store-bought green curry paste and coconut milk that comes from a bottle, which is really good, by the way. Now, you might expect that being in Thailand, people should be hand-pounding curry paste and hand-squeezing coconut milk, but that's just not the case. Thai people are as busy as anyone else and we rely on these pre-made products just as much as anyone else. However, we do have options from many different brands of these products, which isn't always the case overseas. But the truly great thing about being in Thailand is the homegrown herbs, which are so much more aromatic than anything I can buy in Canada. Our curry's done and I put way too much stuff for the amount of curry paste that I had because I wanted to use up all the veggies. So it was a little mild but still good. So I thought my dad was gonna bring home basic stuff, but he showed up with fanciness, steamed blue crab. And let me tell you, Thai blue crabs are so good. He's carefully removing the swimmers, which have the chunkiest, most succulent meat in the entire crab. And the claws are pretty darn good too. Seafood in Thailand is always served with a tart and spicy sauce, and that completes our dinner. I would say this was a pretty great meal. Pretty typical, except for the crab. Everything is served family style with rice, of course. And you know, this is my favorite part about being in Thailand. Eating a meal with my family, whether we make it or buy it, so much joy comes from this daily ritual and this is exactly what I missed the most. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at a slice of my life in Thailand. I'd love to know what your typical day of eating looks like. So share that with me in the comments below. And I will say goodbye for this one. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Kiki. -bye. <laughs> <laughs>